Okay, we're going to continue on in the distro room number two. Uh, we're going to continue on with Vincent. Vincent, I should say. Vincent. Excuse me, Vincent. Vincent. Um, it's not really a distribution talk, it's more about a desktop. Uh, Vincent works with the GNOME project, and he's going to talk to you about how to work well with GNOME upstream. Well, so again, since I was a bit lazy, uh, I didn't want to do a real talk, so it's again going to be some uh, discussion with you. Um, that's really, I mean, that's easy for me. I know. Uh, so, yeah, if you don't know me, I'm Vincent Huns, I'm uh, working on GNOME Upstream, doing, pretending to do some, a lot of stuff, but letting other people do the, the real work. And I'm also downstream because I'm packaging GNOME Pop and Suzy. So I believe I have some good ideas of what's going upstream and the, the, the issues we have downstream too. And the, the, the goal of this talk is to make sure that uh, upstream and downstream are communicating and so that we know, uh, so yeah, I, I, actually, how many people here are upstream GNOME people? Please raise your hands. Something like, uh, 10 people and me. I forgot. And how many people are working on GNOME but downstream packaging it, uh, testing it, and stuff like that? <laughs> so we have some of the people who are the same one, but yeah, we have also different people. That's cool. And so, yeah, uh, the idea that uh, I really wanted to, to, to discuss all the things that we are doing right and things that, that we are not doing good upstream and downstream for GNOME. Uh, so, again, feel free to interrupt me and start discussing about something completely different from what is on the slides. That's what I want to see at me. Uh, so, first I was just wanting to, to introduce some communica communication channels that we have between upstream and downstream. It's really some general information that you should already know, hopefully. Uh, so, we have a, a distributor list mailing list, which is supposed to be a point of contact for uh, downstream people to know what's going on upstream. So for example, if there are some really important bugs that uh, have a fix and that you should backport the, the fix for, for your stable distribution, uh, a mail should be sent there. Uh, if you have an issue in your distribution, <coughs> you think that it's a really big issue, you should probably talk to people there. We also have Bugzilla, of course, we have IRC and conferences where people can uh, talk to each other, so, so well, it's all the classic story. I guess you all know about that. I'm not sure that there's a lot of things to, to tell about that. Um, so one of the, the things I'm really interested in is all the, the, the things that are related to the GNOME release. Since I'm part of the release team, I'm trying to figure out if we're doing a good job, if we're communicating that greatly to downstream people, if uh, downstream people have some comments to do to, 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 to tell us about the, the release we, we do. So I just put some topics like uh, are the release we do of good quality? Is the six month schedule that we have good for you? Uh, are you well aware of how it's done? Uh, which version of module do you, needs to be used for a specific release? Do you know this information? Do you need to know it? Uh, stuff like that. So I put a lot of stuff. And so this is mostly for downstream people uh, to get the, 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 the feeling of what if we're doing things right from the upstream perspective. Uh, do you have enough information about all that? So some comments about that, maybe, from people. Let me run again. I think the six months release or... Uh, Base time released and it's six months, one year is really useful for the distribution because they know uh, what to do if, and it, it can help them take decision what version to upload. But in, in now, uh, now we are talking only about the main uh, component of GNOME on for or all other applications which are which are hosted. And for application, I know that the release schedule is mm, not so predictable. So, for example, a rhythm box. So, yeah, you would like uh, the, the 
in general, GNOME applications to follow the GNOME schedule. Yes. So, for example, uh, all, not not really with with GNOME. Well, with to, GNOME have GNOME yeah, schedule, to, have, to have a known schedule. To have a known yeah, schedule. So, for example, uh, Banshee people yeah. announced like a few months ago that they would just use the GNOME schedule. This is the kind of stuff that yeah. you would like to see. Okay. Yeah. So basically, it would be nice to have somehow like a policy to for an app to be GNOME compatible to have also the that makes sense, yes, I guess. Anybody else? This is maybe a stupid question, um, but uh, do you put uh, the recommended build order of the packages in the release notes? I remember they were there and some release like two four two eight something like that and then at one point they were uh, you did not publish them any longer are they back or so that's a good question uh, we don't have uh, official order to build modules but uh, you could use uh, GS build to get that actually uh, if you if you use GS build uh, what is it at least yeah, just build list and uh, GNOME desktop module set or whatever, something like that. You can get the, the order that we use when the release team smoke tests uh, the, 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 the new GNOME release, the order that we use to build the modules. So um, we don't think it makes sense to publish that uh, because when we did that a few years ago, it was mostly for end users who were compiling GNOME themselves. And we thought that distributors would not have that kind of issue. <laughs> but if you think that it makes sense, I, th I think it made sense because um, I, I'm doing the uh, the GNOME um, packages for a BSD system, and what I was doing with this build order was to provide a, a meta package that just builds them along the the official order. Okay, so. so Try to write the script to yeah, it, it, I mean, it's really easy to do. Yeah. It's, uh, ju so we just have to do it, and that's good feedback to, to have. Any other comment on that? So I, I have one comment uh, as downstream. One issue I have when I package a new version for OpenSUSE is that when an upstream module had a new configure option, for example, you usually read the, the change in the news file and the configure option might not be documented. Or if there's a new dependency which is useful for, for some feature, it might not be documented. And that's an issue we have because a lot of modules are not using a, a really well formatted news file and so we don't know what to change when we update the package. So I think upstream should do, could do a better job at that. So something to keep in mind for upstream people, I guess. The gen to die. Uh, another problem with new releases on uh, when you uh, <laughs> uh, you talk about the configuration options. Uh, we we a lot of times have some problems with automatic automatic dependencies. And sometimes uh, upstream doesn't. So it took long to apply some patches we we give them to not build software depending on software we don't want to be depending. I mean, like uh, if I want I uh, I of you know without uh, GP, or sea, without TIFF support, for example, I can disable it. But maybe A of you know is. Uh, we'll need it automatically. Yeah, I confirmed it. Yeah, I, I saw some patches like that in Bugzilla, and that's true that sometimes it takes time to apply them. So that's generally the feedback about taking some time to apply the patches from Bugzilla. Yeah. I didn't think I would have to run like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ray 
regarding the dependencies, uh, from a Debian point of view, we find sometimes new features are Red Hat uh, centric, and they don't even you know, work on you know, Ubuntu or Debian. For example, uh, GDM new releases uh, depend on X running on the first on the first virtual terminal, for example, and Debian doesn't work like that. Or for example. Uh, package kits or didn't have a um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, they have a, um, a, a means to communicate with the user when when operating for example and, and Debian depends on that it has a the com content and so on uh, package kit wasn't thought like that so that's a problem when GNOME pushes a technology which isn't ready for for some of the bigger Distribution like. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. It, it took some time. Uh, I believe Richard for that. <laughs> so, uh, for, for, for what you were saying, for example, the, when features are some. Some district some trick to some distribution. You, you were saying Red Hat, but I mean, it could be the same for Open Suzy or Debian or whatever. Uh, I said Red Hat uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, I'm not sure that we are aware of that kind of stuff. I mean, the release team is not aware of that, for example. So maybe don't hesitate to contact the release team in such case. I think it's important. Any other comment on that? No? So let's try to move to the next slide. But, oh yeah, but. Uh, what? There are no oh yeah, there are no bugs. <laughs> well, in GNOME we have tons of bugs, unfortunately. But there are good bugs. Um, so I put some stuff about the bugs. Uh, that's from my experience. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you all have some experience with bugs too. Um, a lot of users don't really know about you know, upstream and are reporting bugs directly downstream in the bugs you have the distribution or launchpad if it's Ubuntu or dead bugs for Debian or whatever. And so uh, we have to make sure that downstream people are forwarding the bugs upstream, but if possible only the relevant bugs, which is not always the case. And uh, so that's the triage part. And um, also when we have this, one difficulty is that when upstream has a bug for a lot from, from downstream and we need more information, we put the bug in, in, in needing full state, but the, the report of downstream doesn't know about that. And so the bug doesn't move. So that's the kind of issue we have. Uh, I, I would like to know what is the experience of people upstream, downstream about that. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? Is it globally doing okay? Are we doing fine? Or uh, is this a big issue for people? Well, I'm both upstream and downstream. So, uh, as downstream, I usually I'm. I'm usually unable to fix a bug or make sure that I know that this is a known bug, etc. So I usually tell people, fill your, your bug upstream directly because if I do it for you, we will have the need info uh, tracking problem because if I, I am a proxy between upstream and the user, you can be sure it works for one bug, for two bugs, for 100 bugs, it can't work. So that's really an issue. And another uh, thing that would be great, but I don't know if now Bugzilla supports it, would be to be able to migrate bugs between Bugzilla. If a user feel a bug on Mandriva or Suze or whatever, uh, downstream, be able to push the bug. If we know that it's a, it's not a distro specific bug, 
push the bug upstream. And on the other hand, if there is a lot of reports from one specific distro upstream, be able to push the bug down, uh, downstream. That would be, be great. Yeah, I will give you the microphone, just one thing. Uh, as upstream, I had several bugs from uh, users of, set of distributions. It could be Gentoo, it could be Ubuntu, Fedora, whatever. It's not important. And it's a crash, and I look at the stack trace, and it doesn't make any sense. And that's because there's a patch downstream. And that's highly annoying that this bug got forwarded to me, but it's not my fault. You know. So that's something to keep in mind from downstream people when you forward a bug, make sure that it's not your fault first. I was exactly on the same page because I'm just a simple user of the group. Um, my first behavior when I'm facing a bug is just to ping my uh, distro specific packager um, to forward him the bug. Only it's up to him to say if it's a bug which is distro specific or non specific. On I think the point that uh, Frederick just pointed out, it could be very useful for him because I'm addressing him the bug to be able to switch it to upstream because it's not. He is going to say this bug is not Mandriva or Red Hat or anything specific. And I think that this is a key point because if I'm reporting directly upstream, I will be told, as you just pointed out, uh, please just check this is not a distro specific bug. And I think it could be a, a, a nice way not to overload the upstream team. Just report to your local team, to your district to your distribution team and ask these people to forward upstream when it's needed on the well, uh, speaking as a simple GNOME user here, uh, every time I report a bug in GNOME Bugzilla, well, I'm very afraid of the result. Because I, I use Fedora, so I will report the bug, <coughs> it will be fixed or not. And uh, one year later, the same version will hit Debian. And I have, during three months, duplicate, 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 duplicate. I, re I only receive uh, tens and uh, even hundreds sometimes when I uh, make the mistake of reporting a bug against evolution of uh, duplicates in my inbox. And that really doesn't motivate me to report drugs upstream. Okay, so for that case, uh, it would be nice that uh, if Bugzilla had an option for the report, it simply to opt out uh, of uh, bug mail for that specific bug. And as far as I know, it still doesn't exist, but there's more than likely a ticket in Bugzilla Mozilla Org uh, that you could look up or, well. But that's annoying also when you're uh, upstream developer because I'm getting those kind of things too. So, yeah. Anybody else? I think I saw a hand raised. No? Okay. So uh, so we have to be careful about the bugs and how they are forwarded upstream and to make sure that upstream also handle them if possible. Yeah. Uh, then I wanted to talk about patches. Uh, don't hesitate if you have another topic, by the way. Yeah. So patches. Uh, as downstream, now I understand that sometimes we have to add patches. I used to not understand that, but now I cannot understand. And. Um, the, the, the main, main issue that I had when I started working on OpenSUSE is that we had like, tons of patches for, for GNOME and they were not documented, they were not uh, sent upstream and so it was just a nightmare. Uh, so we have to make sure that we always send the patches upstream. We have to make sure also that it's easy for upstream people to see our patches because it's a common request. And there's also an open issue like when you need a specific feature and that upstream doesn't want it, you end up with a patch that you will keep up for forever. And so how do you handle that? 
So, uh, do you have any experience on that as upstream? Uh, like, you didn't see any patches for um, some distribution forever or whatever? Or from downstream, how difficult it is? Why are you there? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say about um, Ubuntu. I had big problems with Ubuntu two or three years ago where the patches wouldn't ever go upstream. And I've, to give them their credit, have been a lot better in the last six months, nine months, for me specifically, pushing patches up to, uh, pushing bugs up to no bugzilla, and also patches back up to the maintainer. So I know I've bitched about Ubuntu before and patches. I think to this, I've given their dues that it is getting better. Man, this is not going to make it. <laughs> uh, Who is taking picture of me like that? <laughs> Video take that. <laughs> so, in fact, I don't have any specific patching experience with GNOME. I'm a Debian maintainer, but I'm not maintaining GNOME downstream, but still there's a shameless plug which is quite interesting here. So in Debian we are going to um, adapt a, a specific format to tag patches. So basically it's a set of comments the, at the beginning of each patches where you say, where you store st simple stuff like the patch author and the patch description, but also the status of forwarding of the patch. So you can write stuff, it has been forwarded to upstream that day, it has been accepted but then the tech released and stuff like that. Ubuntu is going to accept the very same um, metadata, let's say, for type patches, and I've been spoken, speaking with uh, Fedora guys, which are going to consider it. So maybe it's a kind of interesting practice to consider at least. And if you're interested, is the DEP Debian Enhancement Proposal number three, tag patching guidelines. Who was that? And also there's a patch tracker for. I think there was a mail sent to the distributions meeting it about that. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, so it probably makes sense uh, indeed to, to add as many distributions as possible to the same format so we can easily know what's going on in the documentation of such a patch. And also, so uh, yeah, uh, the, the, there is a website for Debian which is patchtracker.debian.org, I think which is amazing, amazing. It's finally easy to find a patch for, from a Debian package, and I love that. I know that Ubuntu is something like that, which is patches.ubuntu.com. It's also relatively easy, but less easy. Uh, uh, Fedora has the CVS, which is browsable. Uh, Mandriva has the SVN, which is browsable. OpenSUSE is not doing a good job there right now, but I have a, a hack, which is working fine. But so uh, we have like uh, um, on the GNOME wiki, we have a list of links to all the patch trackers from distributions. And so having the patch easily findable is really a, a good step for, for maintainers. Anybody, anybody else on patches? Yeah. Uh, two, two ideas. One which would be great would be since GNOME is using Git, to have all these true for each module, to have a branch for each distro, so that easily upstream could uh, get a downstream patch, or even between downstream, to be able to see what other distro has done. And another thing, which is now becoming very useful, is uh, Git but Bugzilla. Being able, when you are doing your patch on your package, in 10 seconds, to be able to fill a bug with the patch attached. You don't have to open your browser, fill, fill uh, a 10 description line, attach a file, etc. We have to make sure that uh, for patch to be pushed upstream, it, it must be very easy 
to, to be sent upstream from downstream. I just have a question for the distro specific packages. How much of your patches are distro specific? Is there anything which is common between all of them, or does every single patch is distro specific? So in my case, I know that I have some patches which are distro specific because we does not we don't have the same infrastructure below. So for example, we have some uh, in OpenSUSE we have some integration with Yast, which doesn't make sense upstream, and nobody else will care about that. So it really depends. But in general. Uh, I don't know for the distribution, but I expect that most patches are not distro specific. Uh, well, I guess. So very few chance to have a common interest for upstream. So, uh, so sometimes we we have uh, stuff which is. Oops, sorry, uh, we were discussing that uh, some hours ago. Uh, sometimes there are patch which are distro useful which could be cross-distro useful, but which are not um, upstream useful at all. For instance, be able to have another set of translation for menu entries in the GNOME panel. Any dis or, uh, I guess almost all distro has a way to override translation in that desktop file. But for upstream, there is no point, because upstream so translation is in the desktop file. So that's one example of one feature which is not useful for upstream, but useful for almost every distro. To give a, a concrete example on that, uh, we have a patch which is, which is shared by Mandriva, Ubuntu, and OpenSUSE for that. It's the same patch, but it's not upstream. So. <laughs> uh, for, all, for many projects? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> no, so, so the idea that, uh, well, can we talk about that later? Because I don't have a lot of time left. But the basic idea that uh, distributions need to update the translations easily, and they don't want to, to send an update of the desktop file. They want to use a PO file for that. And upstream doesn't care about this way. That's all. Uh, I just wanted to ask the upstream people we have here. Um, what do you think about the idea of having a git branch for all distributions which have patches? Do you think it makes sense? Or no, no. <laughs> come on, come here. <laughs> I can shout. Um, yeah, I, shout. I thought package kit had a OpenSUSE branch, Fedora branch, and it worked really well for a few weeks, and then nobody started using it, so it never got reversed. So I think it, it worked for a little bit, but then the distros just kept doing their own thing with the spec files. So I think it works well as an idea, but maybe not in reality. So maybe the issue there is that the, the tools we are using for RPM are not really well integrated with Git. Yeah. Maybe. I, I think it can only work if it's automated. It has to be automatically put there. It would certainly be useful to have that sort of thing. Um, I, I tried it on my pro uh, LVM, my project for a while, um, but it was just unmaintainable unless it could be automated. Okay, uh, I think we have only 10 minutes left. 11, 15? Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, I have two things I wanted to discuss again. Uh, Sometimes upstream we are doing some big changes like the migration to GVFS, the GDM uh, 220 versus GDM 224, which was completely different, and moving it's it is by to from Pobla to Dbus, and those changes have a high impact on distributions, and sometimes uh, distributions don't understand why we are doing them, and because it's not stable yet. So, for example, in the GDM case. The new GDM was not adopted by quite a few distributions for a long time. So um, I'd like to, to know how people feel about that, how we can improve the situation there. Because, I mean, it didn't happen only once, but it happened not always, but from time to time. So it's something that 
it'd be nice to, 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 to fix and to have a good social form. Ah, I'm sure that Fred would like to comment on GDM, but yeah. What do you think? Nothing. You're all happy with the big change that GNOME is doing and breaking everything for users. Well, Fedora people are happy, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh. I think that the, the other distribution just chooses not to use, so... Like in the GTM case, we just... They, they're not using this, the software because it's not working for them. Yeah, so for example, what we did for GDM is when GNOME 224 went out, we said that there is a new GDM, uh, it's completely different, we think it's working relatively well, but if you want stability, you should use the old one. So it was kind of documented, but still people were not really happy with that, so, but maybe, so maybe there's no other way to do it. I don't know. So I think that if, if it's documented and if somehow the GNOME are aware that those are big changes or things can go out of control, if they say, oh, look, we, we are trying to push <coughs> Fedora, for example, or we, we try to push it in as an official just to get more feedback, but you can still stay with this <coughs> tool and if uh, using GTM, the old branch was usable and not uh, breaking other things in the new GNOME, I think that, that, that's fine. So. Yeah, but it, it only works for for leaf package. It only works for leaf package like GDM. You can replace G old, new GDM by old GDM, but GBFS or ATSPR it's becoming a little harder when it's really deep in the, in the stack. So how, how do you manage, how do we manage that? The same question will happen with uh, GNOME uh, Shell. If we start to integrate GNOME Shell inside the uh, GNOME application, and this version may be done more than. So I'm sure a lot of people didn't hear, but what Xavier said, that we're going to have the same issue with GNOME Shell. Uh, if people if uh, people start to to migrate applications to integrate with GNOME Shell, maybe the applications won't be working fine without GNOME Shell, which might be an issue. And then we have Emmanuel, which is making big signs. What are you? Who cares? What do you mean? Yes, uh, yeah, I, I can project a little bit. Cool. Uh, if an application is starting to use a new feature that is provided by GNOME Shell, it just means that the new application requires hard, as, a, as a hard requirement on GNOME Shell. You can treat it basically as any other application that depends on a new library or a new feature. So you shift an old version of the application until your users will start explaining because you're not shifting the latest and greatest leading edge, and you will be forced to shift GNOME Shell. It's, I know I understand it's problematic, but uh, from um, the upstream um, perspective is we cannot stop developing because suddenly we need to cover every single uh, stability issue that downstream might have. Otherwise, we have stagnation. We cannot do anything else. So, uh, I think, I more or less agree with you, but I think the main issue that there is that uh, if you decide to stay with the old empathy, for example, uh, it will not be maintained anymore. And that's the, the issue people face. For example, if you look at GNOME Power Manager, and I'm sure that, yeah, he will look at me, uh, Richard did a good job when he moved from HAL to Device Kit. He, he just kept maintaining the old branch of GNOME Power Manager for a while, and that was really good for distributions. Absolutely. And so, if I maintain a S time to act, upstream maintain S time to actually do it, I, I fully agree, upstream should actually do it. Uh, the only problem Sure, sure, sure. Sure, uh, uh, I agree with that. No worries. However, if, say, GDFS, if you were going to push GDFS in some uh, deep model like Nautilus, uh, you, you really need to get GDFS really working 
nicely in Nautilus, and that didn't happen at some point. So for maybe one year, there was a real mess in, in Debian at this because Nautilus was crashing and so on, because it had, it had, it had moved partially to GBFS, but some other stuff wasn't working with GB, GBFS, and, and it was a mess. So if we want to push uh, GNOME Shell support in some other stuff, we really need, uh, need GNOME Shell stuff to really work uh, uh, well, because if not, it's going to be an, a, a new mess. So I guess the issue for upstream there is that uh, if you want to make sure that GVFS, so in the GVF, GVFS example, if we want to make sure that GVFS and Notice are working <coughs> fine, we need to deliver that to users. Else we wouldn't be able to know that it's not working fine. Right, or maybe uh, wait six more months to deliver that. Until it's, I mean, not, not. In a, in a release, like. <laughs> no. Uh, I think it's a difficult topic, and yeah, I uh, that's the kind of discussion we I like. I want to have with that. On, on the other hand, Debian didn't have any problem with, with keeping back uh, the inner pillars upgrade, so nothing happened. And we had uh, I don't know I don't remember the, the known version, but maybe we had known two dot twenty four and now pillars two dot twenty or whatever. Mm -hmm. So. It was an ideal, except we didn't have a new Nautilus system and so on. Okay. It was stable. Okay. If reboot need to decide what version mm -hmm. it is, they want uh, a really stable system. And that is what they ended up So, just to move on quickly, since we have only five minutes left, or four now, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to quickly discuss the impact of GNOME 3 for downstream. Uh, we've started talking about GNOME Shell. Uh, I've written some stuff there, well, just some crap, if you can read that. But I, I want to know if downstream people are well aware of how GNOME Shell will impact them, if it's going to be an issue for you, if uh, we need to change some stuff upstream for the, for the GNOME 3 efforts, or, or whatever. I need, we want feedback on that. Shout, please. <laughs> I think a lot of people are scared shitless about applets. Applets? Yeah. yeah. For what reason? The fact that they've got code that works, they've got a UI that they like, and there's no way to display the applet with no shell. So, do you think that the plan of having GNOME panels still available for use, if people don't want to use GNOME shell, is enough for, for that, or...? It will not be actively developed, but it will be maintained, at least for a bit, hopefully. <laughs> like it was in the past. So. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Any other comment on that? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if Globe Shell is something that uh, other applications need to integrate inside. Maybe if if it's just a standalone application that you install or don't install, that distribution can decide. But if uh, other applications start to integrate some technology from uh, GNOME Shell inside the application, then it will be uh, a choice to keep the old GNOME or move to GNOME 3. Yeah. And, no, and nothing in between. So you are a bit worried uh, as a stream that. Uh, as a stream, a bit of worry that uh, upstream continue with GNOME 3 and the distributor will just keep back GNOME 2 and will never... Which, which means more maintenance for you of all uh, oh, stuff. Uh, I don't care about <laughs> <laughs> That's GNOME upstream. They don't care. <laughs> and, and that's the next part. That, uh, I don't understand how downstream uh, says we maintain that, that, that distribution for 3 years. I mean, nobody maintained that. Upstream, we will never maintain any application for three years. Ne ne never. Well, we, we kind of do for security bugs, but that's all. Yeah, well, people <laughs> care to actually. Maybe not for empathy, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm running out of time. Uh, so if you want to discuss that, please come and talk to me, or you can talk or to any of the. Releasing people, we have Andre, Olaf there, we have Frederic also. Uh...
Um, so we have a lot of people. Don't hesitate to come and talk about that. As of stream, as on, as on stream, we, we need feedback on that kind of stuff to, know, to do the right thing. Thanks, everybody. Yes,